I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I appreciate you spending some time with us. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and tonight I'm really thrilled to welcome Vicki Anderson. Some of the material we may talk about tonight could be of a sensitive nature, and there is a full story here that you probably would be interested in hearing. We're, we don't want to gloss over anything, but there are some details that we won't have time for in this uh, half-hour program. But you can go to whatloveisthis.tv or Polygamy What Love Is This on the Roku channel for more details and a more thorough uh, uh, story of, of Vicki. So anyway, Vicki, I'm so pleased that you'd come and share your story with us and your journey from Mormonism to Christianity. Well, it's a pleasure <laughs> to be here. Thank you. Okay. Well, as we do, we usually start, where are you from? And are you from this area? Or were you born here in Utah? I was born and raised in Arizona oh. and came to BYU after high school I and see. have been in Utah ever since. Oh, okay. And uh, so were your parents active and were you? Yes, they were married in the temple. I'm a fifth generation member of the church, oh. pioneer stock. They were sent down to Arizona, were they? Yes, yeah. they were. Yeah. Um, I have ancestors that came from Europe at, when the church was first wow. restored. and. Um, so I have quite an LDS heritage. Yeah, a pretty proud Mormon pioneer I was, heritage. I, I mean, was. We look back at our family history, and that's kind of a, a sense of pride, isn't it? Were they it polygamous is. at all? Yes. Um, I come from the second wife. I had a, an ancestor who married sisters, wow. and I came from the second wife, the younger sister. Okay. And how many siblings were, did you have? Uh, we had a mixed family. My parents divorced when I was 15, and so we had a yours, mine, and ours family. So oh. it, all in all, I'm the oldest of nine. Oh, wow. Nine people. Okay. Yes. And just normal active, active in the f church and primary and all that kind of stuff? Yes. In fact, my first official calling was when I was 14. I played the piano for singing time oh, yeah. in primary yeah. because that was before the three-hour block when you had meetings on, all week long. On Wednesdays or yes. something. Yes. So I <laughs> did primary school. on Wednesday, and then I was in the presidencies of all my young women classes mm -hmm. on Thursdays. And um, high school, seminary, student council, and oh, so huh. I just... Did it all. Had a testimony of the church, do you think? Oh, oh yes. Did, you, did yes. you know that Joseph was a prophet and the of Book course. of Mormon? <laughs> yes, I read the Book of Mormon several times, got straight A's in seminary, took religion classes when I came to BYU. And so I thought I knew my scriptures and I thought I knew who Jesus was. And I was grateful to be a part of the One True Church. Yeah, yeah I had that same sense of accomplishment and that I was on the right path and doing the right things. Yes. Now I guess maybe at this point before we get you out of high school we could talk about maybe the more sensitive kinds of things, whatever you care to share. Uh, one of the things that made it difficult growing up was the abuse that went on in my home by temple recommend holding people. people. Mm -hmm. And um, my this father... Was sexual abuse? And, yes. You know. Um, my father held the priesthood, had a temple recommend, did my baptism, um, used the scriptures to 
to excuse his behavior and um, I wasn't sure my baptism was really valid. I think that was one of my biggest concerns growing well, up. You were eight, huh? Because he, he was baptized, he right? was abusive and if I didn't know if he was worthy to baptize me and therefore maybe my baptism didn't count and maybe I would never be clean enough to go back to live with Heavenly Father again and wow. and he would use the scriptures to to keep me in bondage to yeah. what he wanted. Well, the one that I hadn't heard before was the uh, Mary, the relationship with Mary and, and God. And this is Mormon doctrine, so yes. It, and he was using that. Go ahead. That that was that was the probably the biggest thing uh, that was difficult for me. Uh, he would, he compared our relationship to the relationship that Heavenly Father had with, with the him. Virgin Mary mm -hmm. and that he wasn't doing anything that Heavenly Father didn't do and so he was just emulating Heavenly Father mm -hmm. and if other fathers didn't have that same type of relationship they didn't love their daughters as much as he loved me and how mm -hmm. lucky was I that mm -hmm. I had such kind of... And you were young and a child and uh told that this was important to keep your family together and a lot of, kind yes. of the weight of all of this rationalization was on your shoulders, wasn't it? Yes, and that was reconfirmed in my patriarchal blessing that I was to honor and respect my parents who had set the proper example for me and that it was my mission to keep yeah. the eternal family together. Yeah. So I thought that was why God sent me to this family, this Mormon family, this because uh -huh. we wouldn't be an eternal family if I didn't do my part. And yet you felt like something was wrong, but you thought, well, what did you think? I mean, you knew it was wrong, and if it was right, then why was it a secret? A secret. Yeah, and why, yeah. why didn't I feel better about Right. What was going on, if, if it was okay? Well, like with a lot of things in Mormonism, it's not so much a secret as it is sacred. And oh, so you just yeah. keep sacred things to yourself. Yeah. Well, you've endured some really interesting things, and, and I'm so proud of you for the courage that you've had in sharing and, um, and just being able to uh, deal with it. Uh, and I know that it, it, there probably was a lot of depression and some other factors that have maybe affected your whole life. But uh, Yes, but and, and I still struggle with those, but sure. they're getting better. Well, that's good. So you go to, you finish high school and you're, you go up to BYU. Yes, and I... And you start studying and, and you're dating. required to take religion <laughs> classes yes. there, right? Yes. Any questions ever come up about the truthfulness of the gospel or... Well, as I was thinking mm. back, because it's like, how could I get through all those New Testament classes and not really know who Jesus is? Hello. I read it yeah. myself a couple of yes. times, several times. Answered and all the questions correctly in the student manual and yeah. did all my homework. But then I realized that they would take a scripture out of the New Testament and then cross-reference it with the Doctrine and Covenants or the Book of Mormon. And it almost mixes together, doesn't it? Yes. So you're not really saying, okay, this is what the Bible says, and then this is what Mormonism says. You say, right. this is what Mormonism this says. This is what it means. Isn't that funny? Yes, it all gets blended together yeah. in this, like, soup. Yeah. And uh, I mean, so You don't really realize what Jesus said and didn't say or what Paul said and didn't say. That's, yes. that's interesting. Yes. So you you start dating and you find yes. a return missionary. Yes, yeah. I, I did the checklist. I found I went to BYU, met a return missionary, got married in the temple, stayed in Utah, raised my five sons in yeah. Utah, okay. and sent two of them on missions. So I was doing that's everything good. that you're supposed to do as yeah. a true believing Mormon. And any, again, no problems with the church. I mean, you just find everything, what, no. what's going on that... Uh... I kept separating the people from the church because we are told don't judge the gospel and don't judge the church according to the behaviors of their okay. imperfect members. Yeah. So I was always excusing my husband's behavior, the bishop's comments, and and... And I think that was one of the reasons I was able to step away is because I separated God from the church. 
separated Jesus from the church. Wow, and I don't think we do that too much, or we Mormons don't do mm -hmm. that too much, do they? I mean, no. It, it's all about the church. Yes. And Jesus is just kind of... <laughs> an afterthought. An afterthought. Isn't that yes. funny? Yes. How that works? So, um, gosh, um, what goes on now, next? <laughs> now, well, you, did, you were telling me that you had a, even during an, your active time as a Mormon, that you had been invited to a Christian uh, function. For yes. 10 or 12 years. Yes. Uh, when I started teaching school, I've been gifted a student that was a Christian from a certain congregation in my area in my classroom every year and they were doing educator Sundays where they would, um, it's like a teacher appreciation Sunday, and I would get an invitation and go and, and worship on that Sunday every year with my non-member students that Christian at that Christian church. Mm -hmm. And I'd also get invited to the Christmas dessert. And um, every year I would get those invitations and attend, and I would look forward to them because I knew that it would be about Jesus. Yeah. And uh, I got to become really good friends with the parents of those students and stayed in touch. Mm -hmm. And they offered, a f I had a few offers through the years, is would you like to learn more about Jesus? Yeah. And I went, oh, thanks. I already know about Jesus. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're good. I'm good, we? I'm good. I thought it was <laughs> funny you said something that you evaluated the pastor. Like he was, well, he's about 85% right or 65% yes, yes. right. The, the teacher in me had to evaluate how accurate he was in his sermons based on Mormon, Mormon theology. Yeah. And, so. and he, He's a little he, off here, but he's okay here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now I kind of do the opposite when yeah, I go there. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's like, oh, Mormon's got about 50% of that right. Yeah. Well, now you also had another uh, Mormon friend who started you thinking about things, I guess. Yes. Um... I divorced, which mm. isn't widely, um, <laughs> they don't like you to do that in the Mormon church yeah. when you've been married in the temple. Yeah. And uh, then I had started dating other Mormon men. Mm. And my friend said, before you get involved with more Mormon men, maybe you should read the Mormon essays and really? look at these things that I've, I've discovered. And, and this was a Mormon Yes, person. who was just as solid in the church as I was. So wow. I think that's what it took for me. Yeah. All my Christian friends could talk to me, but I discounted took them. somebody that really was coming from where you were, your yes. background. Yes, you know? who had done everything I had done and believed everything I believed yeah. to say, wait a minute, it, there's more to the story. You might want to check this out. Well, that's really what the goal of this show is. You know, we pr try to bring people on, and, and s admittedly, some have less Mormonism in their past, but like you and me, pioneer heritage and active and temple married and everything. It's so. What did you start? You did. Did you start reading? Y yes. Uh -oh. And within a few hours. 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 <laughs> My world collapsed. My yeah. world collapsed. I woke up one morning, solid, no doubts, no questions. In fact, my Mormon friends have said, well, why didn't you come to me with your questions and your doubts so we could talk about them? And I said, I had no questions. I had no doubts. I knew it was true. I believed in Joseph Smith. I knew the Book of Mormon was true. There was nothing to doubt other than my ability to hit the mark. Yeah. That was the only thing I doubted. Well, yeah, not being perfect, not knowing for sure whether right. you're going to make it or not. Yeah, that's yes. everybody has yes. that. Yes, the but. anxiety over never being good enough. But that was all me. That had yeah. nothing to do with the church or the restored gospel. And What'd you start learning? What, oh. what, two or three things or something that were big. Where tithing went, where my tithing went. Oh. My children went without a lot of basic necessities so I could be a full tithe payer and keep my temple recommend. And when I found out where that tithing went, I think that was the thing that pushed me over the edge. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, and the temple, because there was a lot of temple stuff in my abuse growing up. And so to go to the temple every week and expose myself to triggers that would uh, exacerbate my um, yeah. PTSD um, and find out that that wasn't God-inspired and mm. God-directed. It's like, and I don't have to do this anymore. Mason, yes. yes. 
Well, and here you were involved with these individuals who had temple recommends. I mean, they were yes. answering the questions, are you worthy to enter the temple? Are you honest in your dealings? And so on. Right. And right. What conflict that must have been right. as you went through the temple. And, yeah. yeah, well, I did. Whenever it got to that question about, are you worthy to enter the temple? I would always say no. Oh, and, and he would laugh. look at me, yeah, the bishop would look at me and I, say, oh, I, I, you're I just this. as worthy as everybody else. And I said, but that's not what you asked me. Yeah. You asked me if I was worthy to enter the temple and enter mm -hmm. God's presence. And I said, no, but I am just as worthy as everybody else that's going in the temple. Mm -hmm. we, and so I would always get my temple we're recommend. pretty tongue in cheek about the answering that yes. question or even yes. asking it, you know, because we figure if they're paying their tithing and they're coming to church every Sunday, they're good to go. Yeah, serving in the Relief Society yeah, presidency. And doing, yes, and doing all the right yeah. things. And I still had a, temp, a current temple recommend up until the day I resigned my membership and how long from ago the church. Was this? Uh, three months. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Three months ago. Oh, so I know surprising or not surprisingly we're running out of time. Just let's talk about some important things. Jesus, for yes. example, what was your Mormon Jesus like? Uh, very judgmental um, and never around if I wasn't doing the right thing, because that's what we were taught. If you get angry or upset and, and yeah. offend the spirit, he goes fleeing. Yeah. So I figured he was fleeing from me most of my life. And uh, so when I found his true nature, when I discovered his true nature, that he never leaves, that there's nothing I can say or do that would send him running from me, yeah. that was that was the biggest change and in he, my life. And he loved you so much that he would come and sacri mm -hmm. be sacrificed, shed his blood on the cross. So all that, all those times of abuse growing up and in, and in my marriage, um, when I needed him the most, I thought he was gone. Mm -hmm. And now I know, I know he wasn't. I just didn't you think see, it was there. And I know in, the, in your other interview that you had indicated that there, you would look back now and see many, many times that he actually was there protecting yes. and watching over you. Yes. Well, I, I think it's that's one of the joys that I had uh, coming out of Mormonism, and maybe you were too. That those few hours that you were studying, and really the intense moments. At that moment, did you understand that you didn't know Jesus? Did, I mean, not, were you just learning? Not yet. That? Yeah, I didn't either. It was On that later. day, yes. Yeah. On that day, it was all realizing that everything I thought I knew. About was the, wrong the about the church, the, doctrine, the right. history of the church, the doctrine of the church. Uh, that was all wrong. Yeah. It took a while to come around. Yeah. And when my friend gave me a Bible that wasn't a King James version yeah. and said, why don't you just start reading this? How was that? That that was good. She yeah. said, start with John. Yeah. And I think I camped in John for about a month. Yeah. It's like, okay, I can handle this. And then I had... Were you seeing scriptures that you'd never seen before? I was seeing them in a new light. Yeah. I oh. was reading the same words because right. I had read the Bible. But you're not looking through it at the through Mormon it, The filter. Mormon lens, yeah. yes. Yeah. So it's like I'm dropping everything I thought I knew and I'm taking it at face value and let's see how it goes from there. And it just mushroomed. Yeah. And you've had some good friends that have kind of helped oh. guide you along and... Yes, yeah. yes. I couldn't have done it without the resource of friends that yeah. God put in my life to help me navigate these new waters at this time in my life. Well, you've kind of alluded to it, but what did grace mean to you as a Mormon and now as a Christian? <laughs> grace was almost non-existent. It was kind of like an afterthought. If I did everything I should have done or could have done, then maybe there was a chance that it mm -hmm. might make up the difference. Jesus could be our helper or our yes. get us there at the final yes. little tidbit there. And every day it was like, oh, I failed again. I'm never going to make it. And now I wake up in the morning and think, oh, another grace field day. I can get up and do this again. Well, I don't think we understood that it's not what we do. It's what Jesus did. Yes. We didn't, oh, I never understood that as a Mormon. No. Yeah, and one one interesting thing is when we talk about we're saved by grace after all we can do. Uh, I wonder at what point does that is that sixty percent or eighty percent? When does that 
Jesus's grace in Mormonism kick in? Do you have to be at 90, 95 for that little bit? Does he only give us five or 10 right. percent? Or Well, see, and I figured funny? everybody was getting a different percent. percent. <laughs> of yes, help. yes. So maybe someone else only needed to put in 40 percent, but I needed to put in like 95 yeah. percent. So how has your family been with, with your transition? Uh, this has been a short three months. Three right? months. Yeah, I, I have the whole gamut. I have my two active sons that are very upset and disappointed and voice their disappointment and a daughter-in-law who, who has shunned me and won't, won't respond to anything I, I say. Um, and then I have a couple of boys that weren't as active and so I think they're kind of enjoying it. It's like, oh, okay, the well maybe, off yeah, the pressure's off. Mom's not going yeah. to be judging us and, and um, praying over our souls, but I still am. Yeah. They just don't yeah. know it. Um, and, but then I did have one son, only one son out of five that said, really, Mom? You don't think the church is true? Tell me some more. Oh Let's God. talk about Isn't it. Isn't that a joyful and, a, a uh, approach? I mean, the personality that would actually ask. Yes. And, and so he and his wife listened yeah. and um, have done their own research. And now they attend that Christian church with me oh, that my, my students first started inviting me to. Oh, I bet you are so thrilled. Yes, and so is that congregation. I find oh. out now they said, oh, you're the teacher we've been praying for for the last 10 years. Oh, because so, that was the one you went to for those. Yes. <laughs> sure. So if I had one thing oh. to say, it's don't stop praying. Yeah. Keep praying for your loved ones, your friends, your neighbors, your family. Your, because it may take 10 years, 12 years like it took me, <laughs> but... I'm glad they didn't quit praying. I'm glad yeah. they didn't give up. And you just, uh, I, I mean, being this short of time, do you get the idea that your family or those that are still active and, and even neighbors would be praying for you to come back to church? And yes. Come back and into the fold. I had my one son ask me that. Well, maybe you'll come back someday. And Yes, even my bishop, when he came over the night after he received my resignation letter, he came over to make sure I was the one that really sent it and nobody sent it in for oh, me yeah. um, as, you know, being vindictive. Sure. So he yeah. wanted to verify that I sent that. Yeah. And uh, his comment to me when I verified that I really did intend to send it was that I understand that uh, you had an abusive life and that's why you left the church, and maybe someday you'll heal enough from the abuse that you will realize your mistake and you'll come back into the church. And I told him, I said, if the abuse was the reason I left the church, I would have left decades ago. A long time ago. Long time ago, I stayed in spite of the abuse. Mm -hmm. And now there's no way I'm going to trade the, the Jesus I know now and that walks with me now, I am not trading that Jesus <laughs> for the Jesus that I that had before. The Mormon. Uh, it's just such a, a joyful journey. And, um, you know, I just, I'm just wondering if, if, um, if your other sons would, would they ever talk to you? Do you think you'll eventually, as you pray for them, of course? And yeah, I think as they get over things. the anger and the shock. Yeah that um, we can heal our family relationship mm. again and uh, they might be more open and it may take another 10, 12 years of praying for them yeah. before Are you still happens. studying, I guess, and looking? And, uh, yes. And do, you, do you ever get a sense that, I mean, it just seemed to me as I kept studying that everything just continued reinforcing that I could trust the Bible and that Mormonism had problems? Yes. Do you sense that too? I do. I do. And there's still some biblical concepts. I mean, we're learning new things all the time. I'm only four years out, you know, and so, but I knew, I read new things or the seer stones or masonry or the, right. chur the church essays and Joseph marrying women that are already married. I mean, everything that comes out just reinforces that the, the original thinking that I had is that there's a problem in Mormonism and I think I can trust the Bible. Yes. Yes, that's that's what I've discovered too, and now I'm I'm trying to spend more time 
actually understanding the Bible yeah. and and grasping those concepts um, rather than keep revisiting the negative. The, yeah. Yeah. When I, I start to have my news, doubts, news, yes. Yeah. When yeah. I have my doubts, because every once in a while the th thought flits through my mind. What if I've made a horrible mistake? And I just glance through the Mormon essays again and think, no, I didn't make a mistake. <laughs> no, I think I was right the first yeah, time. I, I was right. I was right. I'm sticking with the Bible. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, again, just a couple of minutes left. What, what do you say to your family and friends? And well, first, I would thank my friends that, that didn't give up on me that kept praying, that kept inviting me to their church, that kept exposing me to Jesus. In fact, when I felt the need to have others pray for me, uh -huh. I didn't call my name into the temple prayer rolls. <laughs> I called my Christian friends because I knew they had a relationship with God and I knew God listened to them and I knew God answered their prayers because I saw it in their lives. Uh -huh. So um, I just hope that my children will see that in me. Yeah. They'll see that my prayers are being answered on their behalf yeah. and that I will continue to pray for my family and friends and yeah. hope that they will be available and willing to listen yeah. to the yeah. call of God. And I'm sure your one son will have some influence there too. You yes. gave a wonderful kind of concluding message on your, pre on your other interview with Doris Hansen. It was about to, the, to those that are abused. Would you just kind of, if you can remember what you said? Oh, I've said so many things about no. that. Well, it was just to, 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 to tell them basically, don't, don't stand for it, you know, but there's a, go ahead. There is no reason God did not send people on the earth for the purpose of being abused, not to save families, not to, not to endure hardships to prove that they're worthy. Yeah. Uh, there is no reason for anybody to stay in an abusive situation, whether it be with a family, with a church, with... Um, yeah. There's just no rationalization that justifies abuse and... Yeah. Agreed. Okay. And Christ is there to heal the brokenhearted. Yeah. From the inside out. Well, Vicki, uh, it's just a delight. <clears throat> I know that you've uh, gone through so much and I'm so proud of you for coming through this and you have such a wonderful attitude and you're so strong and you feel and you feel confident now don't you with, with Jesus and re lots more now than I did la yeah. last year at this time uh, wasn't so good but yeah. this year it's great oh that's awesome well thank you and, and I appreciate you sharing and so uh, we appreciate you watching and as I keep saying, if I think you're following, the LDS at least, are following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Read the Bible. Start with John. We'll see you next time.